sharing. I learned the value of sharing in kindergarten where Miss Peters said to me I needed to share my blocks with Billy. Billy was the boy who tormented me. Every block that I found that was smooth and curved with the grains of woods, creating beautiful and interesting patterns, Billy would take them from me. Billy would like to chew on the blocks, he liked to draw on the blocks, and he liked to throw the blocks at me. But mostly he just loved tormenting me by taking the blocks from me. Miss Peters said it would be good for my character that I needed to know how to share that I had to share my blocks with Billy. Miss Peters said sharing would make me feel good. This is called, Aren't You Interested? He said, hi. And she said, try somebody else. He said, my name is Love. And she said, I've heard that before. He said, but this time it's real. And she said, I've heard that before too. And he said, but I know you're the one. And she said, for what? And he said, for holding hands and walking into the sunset. And she said, it looks like it's going to rain. And he says, but I have an umbrella. And she said, but it's too small. He said, I'll hold her over you. And she said, but I don't want to feel obligated. And he said, it was really nice talking to you. And she said, what's the matter? You're not interested. This is called, I Know What I Want. I was handed a menu and I was asked, what did I want to order? I said, I wanted the waitress. More than I wanted the breakfast. I was told that the waitress wasn't on the menu. And I explained, I don't order from menus. I know what I want. This one's called, I Had to Have Seconds. Instead of bringing me the orange juice, she let her gown drop to the floor and laid herself on the table. When I was asked why I was late for work, I said that my breakfast was so good, I had to have seconds. This is called the Lost Cafe. I didn't have much money, so I ordered the cheapest item on the menu. I ordered the kid's portion of French toast. I was brought a pile of blueberry pancakes with ice cream on the side. I ordered a small dish of home fries. I received a plate of grilled steak, sausage, and bacon, which the waitress said came with a large plate of home fries. I ordered a small orange juice and I was given the pitcher. I said I would like some coffee and the whole pot was brought over. I asked the waitress what was going on. She said, this is just how it is around here. I said, wow. I want to live here. Just then the alarm clock woke me up. And in the cold kitchen I found I was out of eggs. The milk was sour and the mice had gotten into the cereal. Looking out the window I couldn't see the corner store. The snow was a white curtain with a howling wind. That probably wouldn't have stopped me but my wallet was empty. So I went back to bed. I laid there closing my eyes tightly knowing I wasn't going to find that cafe again. There are bodies in the streets on Mondays. I walked into the store and I said, do you realize that there are bodies laying out in the streets? And they asked me what day it was. I said, it's Monday. They said, oh yeah, there's always bodies in the streets on Mondays. I said, what are you talking about? What do you mean? There's always bodies in the streets on Mondays. They said over the weekend, people get stressed out, facing a week with no jobs, nothing's changed, more debt, tensions high, fighting all weekend. There are bodies in the streets on Mondays. The politicians are arguing and a vote's being called and they're trying to propose to eliminate weekends. Some are trying to add and say that the advertisements are blaming TV violence. Others see the whole complaint about all these bodies in the streets as a real distraction. From the real business at hand, we should be giving more tax cuts to the rich. When I ask others what can we do some, to not see the bodies in the streets on Mondays, some people suggest that I just stop walking the streets on Mondays. Recognizing the historical manifestation of all this, I knew we would soon not be walking in the streets on Tuesdays. 
There are things that can be done to stop the bodies in the streets. This one's called The Well-Dressed Man and a Dog. A well-dressed man walks into a bar with a dog. And the bartender says, he looks really mean. He looks like he won't listen to anyone, and he looks like he's ready to kill for no reason. I don't want him pissing and shitting in the corners. And can you get him to stop humping the bar stool? And the dog says, I guess you can dress him up, but he is who he is. A lot of stuff that's been going on these days. It's called the administrative leave, I guess. I am unarmed. I am unarmed. I don't know how many times this has to be said, and most people who are of color, this doesn't matter. He was shot six times. They put handcuffs on him. He was semi-unconscious. They had shot him six times. They attempted CPR. In the training of the officers, one wonders what were they told to expect after you shoot someone six times. A white woman in Tennessee went on a shooting rampage, clad in body armor. She held her gun out the driver's side window and she was just shooting at everything she could see, cars and people as she drove by. Police were called. She led them on a chase. And while pointing her weapon out the, at the police, clearly the police were in more and more danger than those who were standing there saying, I am unarmed. And yet she was taken into custody without incident or injury. She is one of countless white people taken into custody without incident or injury. In the first six months of 2016, excuse me, over 530 people were killed by the police. Mentally ill people, people of color, Native Americans are killed, obviously, at a much higher rate. Police killing a black person with their hands up in the air, unarmed, is now reported as if normal. Surprised by the response of outrage, where is it? A black girl is shot sleeping on a couch in the wrong house. The police stormed into it, and all they reported was they made a mistake. A father whose car broke down was shot with his hands in the air. In Massachusetts, the Supreme Court has said a black man has legitimate reason for running from the police, so that his running away does not imply guilt. There are many reasons since the days of slavery. We now have private prisons. People of color are being shot and put away over and over again. Black lives matter. What gas adds gas to the fires are the quotes of the numbers of the police who have been convicted for these murders. The numbers show where the justice is. Zero. There have been no convictions of any police. Many disappear to reappear at other police forces in other cities, there is no accountability. There will be investigations, and Congress has voted and requested police keep track of these killings. We have been keeping track of these killings. They're happening more and more and more. We are unarmed. When will this killing stop? How will you stop it? Uh, there's lots of talk about homelessness. And so I, I heard this story, and so I ended up writing this. It's called Homeless. Homeless. Authorities in a city have cleared out the jungle. It's always called the jungle. In every city, everywhere, it's reported as one of the largest homeless encampments in the nation. There are larger ones. This one had 300 people living there. The people interviewed said it was like a big family. We look after each other, especially the single females. We check in on each other. We were all we had. The city decided to clear the area, stating that there were increasing security issues, public health issues, pollution issues. There were a lot of issues, and winter was coming on. They said they would put the 140 people in shelters, hotels, and motels. Others were given rent subsidies. But having found places, but haven't found places to live, it was said that not all 
that jungle residents would find places? And could the court and, and couldn't count on the city to place them into homes, as the city had only budgeted ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Four million was already spent on putting up the fence and trying to get people out. Why piss this money away? Playing, paying for hotels, and then paying for temporary home housing until the money runs out. People are homeless again, and they still don't have jobs. Ten million dollars. Three hundred people. Why not build sustainable small housing for all of them, with plenty of money left over for job training, health care, transportation, which is still even more money left over for those who need to take their cut, grease the palms, you know, buy the elections. Meanwhile, more money is being spent to install reinforced fencing to keep people out. Where do we want the homeless to go? And do we really want to help the homeless? This happens in a lot of cities, and this happens over and over again, and um, I felt like this happened here in Northampton a little bit, um, and other places, and though there is still a really great art scene, but it's usually what happens is artists come in, and then um, after a period of time, rents go up, and people have to move, and they move maybe to East Hampton, and then to somewhere else. So this is called, and I was asked to write this for a particular thing, and this is called Northampton, What About the Artists? It was 1979, I pulled into Haydenville in a VW camper. I camped in a friend's driveway. He had told me to come out from Buffalo, New York, that this is where it was happening for artists. He had a studio in Florence. This is when the Iron Horse was only a little storefront. They hadn't, had, they hadn't moved the wall yet. And on the wall, it said, may the arts live. Later, musicians would complain how are the artists supposed to live? I was performing juggling in the streets. One day I was informed that the International Juggling Festival was happening at Hampshire College. I walked into a room of people throwing things in the air and at each other. I became a professional juggler. Making my living for more than 20 years, I would be a part of many of the fine first nights that happen, and twice at the really big show at the Academy of Music. Where on the stage one could feel the smell in the curtains and all the great acts that had ever been there. There were many jugglers in the area who would meet in Pulaski Park. When the state closed down the mental institution, the audience became more interesting and the streets seemed sadder. With many wandering around with nowhere to go, there, was still many afford there weren't still many affordable studio spaces. This would soon change. As the city became the hip place to be, as Smith College no longer worried about being the lesbian mecca, new restaurants opened and closed, opened and closed, and opened and closed. New businesses came and went, and rents kept climbing. Before they did, there was theater in the streets and abandoned storefronts. Creativity flowed into the streets from alleyways. A vanguard, movie house open, coffee shops, dancing the night away at Dance Spree. There were hovels known as bars that gave some of the greatest bands in the area a crowdy, sweaty, religious experience. That soon would be cleaned up, made into hip clubs, the lost that edge. Now it would take someone a few weeks to eat at all the restaurants. Hip shops continue to open as prices go up. The wandering lost people seem to have wandered somewhere else. There are still street performers here and there and those that ask for spare change. When the venues for known artists have increased, where are there the numbers and where are the shows for people who are just starting out? Getting pushed from one end of town to the other, and as the hipness follows and the prices go up, they search for other abandoned buildings, low-rent districts, factories that haven't been turned into malls. And the sign reads, let the arts live. But what about the artists? Uh, this one's called, uh, Talking to God Costs Money. And this was actually a true story. I was a young boy kneeling next to my mother in church when she started to get up. So I started to get up with her. She turned and she told me to stay kneeling. I asked her where she was going 
and she said she was going to talk to God. I said I wanted to talk to God. I watched her walking up to the front of the church. She lit a candle, knelt down. Soon she got up and she came back. And I asked, what did God say? She told me to be quiet. We went back to kneeling and praying. A few days later, I was driving by the church on my bicycle. I decided to stop. I found the doors open. I went in. I walked up to the candles. There were small ones and large ones. And I started to light them. I lit them all. I had a real bonfire going. I was going to have a real good talk with God. Suddenly, next to me, to my side, stood the priest. And he asked, did I have the money to light all these candles? I put my hands in my pockets and I pulled out my empty pockets and the priest started putting out those candles. I learned that day that it costs money to talk to God. Thanks, Northampton Community TV. Uh, this is my last poem, and um, just want to say again, if you want to check out any of the great festivals and open stages and things I have, just go to humanairpublishing.com, and you'll find all the information there. You can find me on Facebook there, too. Uh, this one, last poem, is called Rocks, and it's about um, seeing an image in a National Geographic when I was growing up and how it felt to think about my uh, relatives from Poland and what, what I thought was going on when I saw the photo rocks. My distant relatives in Poland were seen standing in the field throwing rocks at tanks. Polacks talk funny. Throw the horse over the fence some hay. Throwing rocks at tanks didn't stop the tanks. Hundreds of Palestinian children were put into prison for throwing rocks. Some were even killed because they threw rocks at civilian citizens and soldiers. Young boys throwing rocks at each other, at cars, at windows. Johnny, how many times do I have to tell you, don't throw rocks. What is the point of throwing rocks? When you're under siege, my relatives wouldn't go down without a fight and only having rocks as weapons. Here comes my best shot. to stop biting Billy and I said to Miss Peters I was sharing my feelings with Billy. This is called Aren't You Interested? He said hi and she said try somebody else. He said my name is Lowe